Hello, and welcome to the first in our series of four webinars where we'll discuss transitioning your studio to online photo sales. My name is Terry Keller, and I'll be your host as we learn how easy and profitable it can be to take advantage of the new technology that's increasingly in demand. While there are several great options for online photo sales, this webinar focuses on the Photo Day platform and all the truly terrific benefits it offers your studio. I have with me today my colleague here at BRI, Philip Buckley, our resident volume hi. photography expert. Say hi, <laughs> Philip. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Philip will be fielding your questions over the chat during the discussion. And remember, time permitting, we'll, there will be a Q&A with Brian after the discussion. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our own Photo Day Trailblazer, Brian Dorensky. Hi, Brian. It's good to see you. Hey, Tari. How are you? Great. Hey, Brian. Thanks for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about what it means to be a Photo Day Trailblazer? Uh, Photo Day Trailblazers are basically, uh, we're, we're those that kind of jumped in on the platform right at the beginning. Um, we, were, we were first kind of to transition our our business model from paper forms over to, to online to photo day. Um, it also kind of means we're subject experts in the software and the processes and sales processes that go around that new uh, online service. So um, photo day is not actually new per se. They've been in business now. This is their third year. Um, so uh, we're trying to move things forward and, and uh, uh, photo, uh, photo Day Trailblazers are a part of that. We we consult with them. They ask us questions, give us feedback. Um, we give them a lot of information about how we're using it, and so that kind of helps us make, uh, you know, make a, a difference in in terms of how the software works. And how long have you been a volume shooter? Um, let's see. I started shooting uh, volume in about two thousand, late two thousand ten, early two thousand eleven. Um, I, I uh, picked up a. a an assistant shooting job with another photographer and then it just kind of grew out of that and he decided to leave and do something else and it just kind of progressed on that and uh, I grew the business from there. Okay, so you knew what you wanted when you went looking for the solution to fit a particular, the particular set of needs of a volume shooter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I had already started uh, about, about six, eight months before Photo Day came around uh, trying to cobble together a bunch of online services to get rid of my paper. Uh, I really wanted to get rid of that paper workflow. Uh, it was eating up so much time on the back end um, that every fall my wife bas I was basically widowing my wife for three months, you know, through the fall sports season. So um, it was really a, a way to, to try to minimize all of the work that goes in after the shoot. Um, that's, you know, reading, reading uh, handwriting, the deciphering forms, setting up the orders, um, you know, processing checks and, and, and cash. Uh, making sure that all matches up and then of course having to match the player to the image um, you know that was always a process so um, and then of course it there is. was online online um, image delivery we were trying to do uh, digital image delivery and there was no real good process to do that in a volume setting so everything was a one-off create mm -hmm. a single type gallery send somebody the link so if you're doing that for three four hundred kids that that's hugely labor intensive so it was prohibitive to selling digital images. So, yep. Uh, yep. yeah. All right. Okay. So let's jump right in. So I'm so excited. I have my photo day account. I've got my shoots lined up, got a little time before. So I want to set my photo day up correctly. So Brian, how do I get started? <laughs> well, first thing you need to do is change your mindset. Um, Paper forms and online sales are two completely different marketing and sales processes. Um, that you know the 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 old mindset is basically you take three shots and the photographer chooses the best one and uh, that's what they get. Um, any buddy print is also you know ordered, but that's uh, you know you just pick the best pose. So you're limited basically to the single image, the team image, and whatever buddy shot they ordered if they ordered one. Um, and then your sales are done. That's it. You, you have no opportunity to continue that sale process. Um, it, it, you can't even go and resell them later on. Um, so with the new mindset, you could take multiple poses um, and, and show them online and let the parents pick out what they like. Um, you know, the extra images go towards um, increasing your average order value. Uh, so you can, you know, 
give them more poses. You can do, if you're doing composites, you can offer different looks. So you can do two different templates. Um, you can do black and white, uh, and they can pick from all of that. And all that does is serve to increase your order, average order values. Um, it's not uncommon for us to see value, you know, orders coming in between 60, 80, 90 dollars. And we've seen, I recently had an order for 415 dollars, which I've never had before ever doing paper order forms. Um, it's unheard of. Um, that's awesome. That's really yeah, terrific. That was, that was yeah. a pretty impressive order. Uh, but uh, you also create a fear of missing out. You got all those great images and parents want them all. So, yes. you know, you got to give, give them what they want. Don't say yes, no. You got to give right. them what they want. And photo is a great part, way to do that. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. For my no, part, fine. I think the one of the genius things about photo day is that it, it puts the data entry on the folks who know what the data is. So, you know, yeah. they're liable, they're less liable to make mistakes and there's less remakes, that sort of thing. Yeah, Photo Day offers a, a procedure where you can, where they, uh, uh, the parents can actually create their own, um, you know, branded slash, you know, information type uh, images. So, you know, memory mates, they enter their own names, their own team name. Um, bag tags, they have to enter their kid's name and team and all of that. And that's all on them. And that can be done all in the software. And it takes the it takes the work off of us as well as, you know, reduces the amount of remakes from the fact that you can't read their handwriting on a form or, you know, there's nine different ways to spell somebody's name. Um, you know, so it also reduces the amount of time on your end. So you've got more time to do other things and time is money. So that's right. That's right. Okay. Number two. So now we're doing packages and that's what's driving your sales now. Uh, it's no longer just the value of what you think an image should be. So you, you really, you need to stop thinking of my memory mate is a $25 image. It's the product and how you package it together with other products that now drives your sales versus the value of just a single image. Um, I know there's an, uh, 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 that's probably one of the biggest hangups that uh, uh, studios moving over to online have, and it doesn't matter what platform you're on. This is still an issue that you can't control so you need to price and package your uh your products in a way that gives you that value that you want out of it but also um, allows parents to pick and choose still what they want um, that's right brian building the right packages is such an important step in the process we've dedicated an entire episode to it yeah June we do we have our next one two, in two weeks on june 30th at noon and learn how to create packages that truly drive your sales yeah Sorry, Brian, I didn't day. want you to give too much away. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> well, and, you know, honestly, the online service and the online process reduces the amount of work behind the scenes. Um, it also reduces the amount of work on site. So you're not having to manage uh, pulling an order form or taking a picture of a QR code and then um, writing down the image number and making sure, or taking a team slate, which is another way we used to do things. Um, it gives you more time to, to focus on, um, you know, getting quality images. It also, you know, you can pay attention to the details like, you know, uh, a, a shirt is out of whack or, you know, somebody's head's not tilted quite right or, uh, you know, really focus on getting quality images and multiple poses. Um, so you're not having to mess with all that paper. Uh, it also gives you time on the back end to do more communication. Uh, with leagues, uh, because communication is really key with this platform. Um, you really need to get things out there early and frequently, because uh, if you're transitioning, parents are going to take time to, to need the time to have to understand the process. Um, and you're still going to get parents that are going to walk up to your order table and say, "Here, here's a check for." Oh, I don't need that, you know. So you got to walk them through the process. Um, yeah, it also gives you time to improve your craft. Um, if you if you're not spending so much time on the back end, you can start planning shoots out better. Um, you can work on compositing skills. You can you know do other things. You can even have more family time. Uh, honestly, that's, that's, right. that's, that's a huge right. process. Less time filling out all those orders, sending yeah. the orders, sorting them when they get back, delivering them when you get them. It, this is all. That is such a huge time suck. It is. It's a huge and time process. It's the whole reason I went this way. Yeah, and you don't get paid for that time either. Um, no, you don't. That's uh, that's all time behind the scenes, and you have to factor right. all of that into your pricing. And now you can now you can raise your prices and still have more time. 
Um, you know, but with each player, you, you can ask for more poses. You can, I mean, this whole thing is just all about time and managing and you all that can, time. You can hone your craft to get really terrific. I want to stop and say something about this composite here. <laughs> this team composite, I saw this come through and I have to say this is really, you know, pro poster, pro ball poster type stuff. And this is what, this is what they're seeing. This is what they're looking for. The players are seeing it. They want it. This is, and this is really some really terrific work, Brian. This is thank you. Uh, thank outstanding. you. And this was a fun shoot. The guys were having fun. They were, um, you know, some of them were a little hesitant about what was going to happen because they'd never been shot on green screen. So I'd had to stop and show them. You know, I'd opened up my, my phone and showed them. Uh, I've got a little uh, sticky folio that, that shows my, my portfolio of images. And I said, well, have you guys seen the softball team? Well, no, we didn't see any of their photos. Well, here they are. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And I said, well, that's what we're doing here. And so once they kind of got it and saw it, it was a lot more... Um, organic to to get them to pose for things so you, you actually have to communicate with the players as well i mean these are all high school guys um you know can you imagine and little guys standing the in front pro, of the screen, you know? when you go to the pro ball games this is what you're seeing up on the screen you're seeing this graphic you're seeing this is this you have you and others have raised the bar where sports images are are concerned i just love seeing that that it's was my goal amazing. when i started doing composites about six years ago was i, I was really tired of the basic templates um you know the, well, you the outdid static it. stuff you and it, you know nothing against labs you guys do a great job but updating those templates takes time for you guys and i didn't want to wait so well I, and we uh, have to design a template to fit everybody right you know, that everybody can fit their things into rather than you know um this this is highly individualized. I know you have yep. a process. This is awesome stuff. Yeah, no, this is a this is a, a very custom composite stuff that's directed direct towards the teams, um, using their logos, their school colors, um, modifying templates, creating your own templates. Um, those are all things you're going to have time to do if you go with an online service. So, and we'll do a webinar on that with you, Brian, and you can help these cool. folks do that as well. Yeah, that'll well. be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so I don't have any money envelopes. How do I communicate with people? What am I, how am I, how am I telling them where their images are, how to get to them, how to buy them, how to download them? What, how am I doing all that? Well, with Photo Day, they've got built into their, um, their software in your dashboard is a marketing tab. And you go into that marketing tab and they have already done all of the work for you in terms of um, you know all of the pieces that you want to put into place they've got you know uh, web templates they've got banners they've got posters uh, social media um, uh, pre-done pre-sized uh, templates um, all of this stuff is just you know downloadable and all you have to do is put your own code then and, and whatever verbiage you'd like to change in there and you can print it out you can print it with you know just on a piece of paper you can email it out um, they do have email flyers that if you are uploading a CSV full of uh, full of emails um, you can just send that email direct out and uh, that is that's probably one of the best uh, little they really have things. something for everything in there yeah they really do They've they really do and um, you know you really want to get that out soon so this isn't something that's gonna, you know, you can't just say, well, I picked up this team and I'm gonna do this whole league of 800 people tomorrow. You're probably gonna have to spend a lot of time communicating with every single parent at that shoot. Not that you can't do it because Bye. I've seen people that have. Um, you put up sandwich boards with that code on it, um, posters, banners, whatever you can. Um, even print out little business cards or little rack cards mm -hmm. with it on there and you give them out as you go. Um, you know, and you can create a QR code to scan that. And that's just multiple ways of getting that information into parents' hands so mm -hmm. that they know what to do. And um, so you they can, have their so own Photo app, Day too. can store it as well. Photo Day stores that information for you as well. So yes. you have um, your customer relationship management built in as well. Yes, absolutely. It uh, uh, With private galleries, which there are three different types of galleries, and we will go into that much more detail in another webinar, but yes. um, in, in the private gallery process, you upload a CSV with all of your school data or, or team and league data, and you can apply that to uh, each student or each player as they come through uh, mm -hmm. using what's called the Capture app. And there's a whole mm -hmm. webinar we're going to do on just that Capture app process. Mm -hmm. um, 
and so that really ties everything together. Removing the paper order forms completely, tying your image data to the individual student and or player, um, and that once the, the once they have their own individual gallery code, that you can market and email that directly out as well. Um, so and if text you have to, it out. It goes out over SMS text as well. Right. You send out a that. you send out a text message. They mm -hmm. they send it out for you. So if parents come to the come to the the you know the photo day or picture day. And they they see this code on a on a piece of paper, and you say, okay, all you got to do is text this code to nine zero seven three eight, which is Photo Day's um, own text message uh, system. Uh, then you send that out, and they will get a text message as soon as the gallery is open. Um, as soon as uh, let's see, and then three days later, I think they get another reminder, and then seven days after that, and then I think ten days later, they'll get a final reminder. So they only get like four text messages. So it's not like they're inundating it, but um, right. it's right. a gentle way of reminding people get really busy. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you have to continually can, you know, stay in front of them. And there's marketing research that says it takes seven times to get through to your customers um, to get a message across. So you have to touch them seven times with this. So if you do it two weeks before your shoot, a week before your shoot, you get them all text messaged in. As soon as the gallery's open, you get four more messages. There's your seven. That's so, right. That's right. Know, there's and a process around in. it. Opting in is crucial. Um, that's it, it. But people, people, I, I find that people do it because they're curious. They want to see yeah. the prices and they want to see the images. They want well, to any more. One of the best ways to get through to people is video. Um, honestly, yeah. YouTube videos, using Loom videos uh, attached to an email, um, anything that you can do to put your face and your mm -hmm. personality to the shoot. Yep. That way, you're not just this ambiguous business that you know, yeah. uh, is coming to take pictures. So yeah, yeah, you know. great stuff. And remember, folks, we're just scratch uh, scratching the surface here um, in the in the getting started webinar. We'll go into deeper discussions about some of the really great features of Photo Day in uh, future webinars as well. Yeah, that'll be a that'll be a pretty in depth one. Okay, so can you tell us, um, Photo Day has the advanced pay system. Can you tell us a little bit about what are some of the advantages of the advanced pay system? Yeah, absolutely. Um, really, advanced pay kind of is your start to your sales process. Um, by putting a gallery in what's called advanced pay mode, it is um, it allows them to see your packages and pricing before the shoot, um, and so they can kind of pick out or have an idea of what they're going to be getting into. You don't get the sticker shock um, of, oh my gosh, that package is how much? Mm -hmm. um, they can prepare for it. And then they also have an opportunity to buy what's basically a, a uh, an in-store credit uh, that is applied directly to their order at checkout, and it is tied to the phone number they used uh, purchasing it. So uh, as long as they're logging in with that same phone number, it's automatic. You know, They don't even have to think about it. And, you know, if they're not thinking about it, money say, money spent is, you know, money forgotten. So if you're getting this two weeks before the gallery opens, they've forgotten they spent 30, 40 bucks. Right. And then they open it up and go, oh, yeah, I've got 40 bucks here. Well, I want this and I want that. And, okay, so I've got $35. What else can I buy? So they're going to buy more than the $40 that they spent on, a, on an advance pay credit. Um, and it's got multiple benefits for, you know, for them as well as for the studio. Um, you know, as a studio owner, you want to make sure that you're, you've got buy-in, that people are actually going to come and buy the photos. Uh, the sales process with, with gallery sales is a little different than uh, paper forms because paper forms, you get your paycheck up front right now, um, day of photo shoot. With uh, gallery sales, you're spreading it out over time because you're allowing the, the parents to come in and buy when it's convenient for them. Yeah. So I think we found that most sales happen uh, you know, a good 40 to 60% of your sales are going to happen in the first couple of weeks, but then it's going to trail off, but you're still going to get sales. Um, so one of the ways that we manage that is we just don't, ex don't expire the gallery. Um, you can get orders from, you know, I got orders from a, uh, a baseball team that I did last, uh, last March. And then when I scheduled them for this coming March or for this March, I had people say, Oh, I forgot to buy my, my photos with COVID and all we got, you know, just completely forgot about it. Is it still available? Well, of course it is. You know, you don't want to say no. I mean, and you can do reminder promos as well. You can do you can, other kind types of promos in here. Again, we'll have to go into that. Um, yeah, there are other promos that you can you can run. You can run a holiday promo, but you can also contact um, 
the uh, support bubble and ask them to send out a custom SMS text message system uh, message that will go out and say, hey, for the next 48 hours or for the next week, we're running a, a 30% off or 10% off or a free shipping order or mm -hmm. offer. And Or how about order. offer acrylic blocks for Mother's Day or Father's Day or something like that, that yeah. something you don't normally offer. We're putting some high-end um, things into Photo Day, so you'd be able to offer some of those luxury items at gifting times. Right, absolutely. That's that's really one of the benefits of, of the promo process. Um, but as far as advance pays go, uh, you can incentivize them. You can you can say, well, for a limited time, I'm going to give you free shipping if you do an advance pay. Uh, now I'll give you a free shipping code for orders over an X amount of dollars. So for me, it's forty bucks. You can't get free shipping unless your order is going to be over forty dollars, which is just about a ten percent discount for them. Because and that's all automated. You can just fill that all out and put it. Yep, in. Just you put it in it. there and apply it, and as soon as they buy it, it's automated. It's tied to their phone number. They, uh, you know, easy, it's all easy. done. You wash your hands of it. Um, you can also easy. use it for like dance schools, so you can limit. Um, you can say, well, for every for every costume, um, I want a ten dollar advance pay. So if they have a forty dollar advance pay, you know they're going to buy four costumes. So you, they're already in it for forty bucks and four costumes. Right. They're going to see all those photos and love them. So they're going to forget about the forty bucks and they know that they can buy all of the costumes their kid was in. You know, for each dance, you can or organize it by dance even. Um, you know. You can require it to be photographed. So, say you're using uh, a service like Next Gen Photo, uh, and you are doing all these composites. You want to get your money up front, or at least cover your cost before you sell these things, because sure. of course you're sure. doing them on spec, um, and this reduces that that on spec process. You can say, I need a ten dollar, uh, ten dollar advance pay, you know, purchased before I'll photograph your child. And of course, okay. in Photo Day, you can have it say who the child is. Um, with that advance pay credit. So you have a list of everybody that advance paid and you can just bring that with you and you'll know that so-and-so didn't, you know, did their advance pay and somebody didn't. So you don't have to do individuals. You just take their team photo or their group photo and you, they're done because you know they're not going to buy. Or you can give them the opportunity uh, to go ahead and advance pay right then and there because you still haven't released the gallery. Uh, get the advance pay credit is always available up until the point where you publish that gallery out for, for business. So they actually still have a little more time. Um, I like to tell them it's before the shoot, but it's really until I publish it. So, right. <laughs> you know, little, little well, mind game there. Well, awesome. You know, Brian, we've um, completed the uh, planned portion of the program. So I guess we can open it up now to questions and answers, the Q&A portion. Would you sure. like to take some questions for us? Absolutely. All right. Let's do that. Okay, we, we have question. one uh, question here from Janet. Uh, she's asking, how effective is FaceFind for proofless? For profiles? Sorry, for uh, profiles, sorry. No, no problem. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, uh, oh, nice. it, it maps yeah. pretty well. We did some experimenting down at uh, in Florida um, back in February at uh, Jay Boltwright's boot camp. As a matter of fact, it was uh, Stella Crace, who's another, uh, another trailblazer, was down there with us, and, and she was really working on uh, that part of the presentation. And we basically tried with masks, we tried with sunglasses, we tried with hats, then we tried with all of them. And honestly, I think she found that um, everything except for all of the ma uh, you know, mask, sunglasses, and hat turned sideways was about the only way you weren't going to get, um, get a match. Uh, so it's pretty accurate. Um, honestly, if you have people behind you, so you have somebody that's standing in line and they see the face and it's right here, they're going to map that to the same person because it's going to consider that as another face that needs to be applied to another gallery. So, yeah, it's uh, it's accurate. It's crazy, crazy sensitive. So, um, let's see. Can we see what the client sees in Photo Day? A sample gallery. Yes, actually, they have sample galleries on the website. So go, uh, you can go to your dashboard. I believe there is a sample gallery in there. Um, uh, just hit up the bubble and they'll give you the link to it. I'm fairly certain that there's a, uh, a photo day gallery, uh, test gallery. There's another one that says, on face find, are you shooting and uploading with Wi-Fi direct from the camera or using the iPad? Actually, the beautiful thing about the Capture app is it does not require Wi-Fi. It doesn't require an internet connection at all. It will it will store all of those images and and 
you know, technical data on your phone until you get to Wi-Fi or cellular signal, uh, and then it will blast all of that up to your gallery. It matches it all up automatically. Um, so and our third web, our third webinar episode is about capture. That whole that whole episode will be about the capture app. And I was actually on a shoot with Brian. Not to interrupt you, Brian. I'm so sorry. Uh, I was out on a shoot with Brian, and what to me looked like could have been complete chaos was completely and utterly lined out just by capture app and it was it was really amazing yeah that was actually a fun shoot i got to spend a little time with some baseball players and uh um you got to see their reaction a little bit as i shot them and stuff and uh and how i worked with them but um the capture app made it so fast i didn't have to worry about you know making sure who was who and and writing image numbers and you know making sure ink doesn't bleed when it gets wet there is um the composite that Brian made off of that shoot, um, the, the individual shot, and then the the composite shot that he made, and all of these kids were all milling around and talking and laughing and having a great old time and coming and going, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be, and it it just looked, you made it just look so easy and so beautiful. So photo day and Brian Dorensky, so. I'll stop sharing that now. <laughs> oh, heavens no. No, keep it up there. No, I'm just kidding. Right? <laughs> um, let's see some Beautiful work. <laughs> How does Photo Day compare to Got Photo, and why should we choose Photo Day? Uh, I can't speak about Got Photo. I haven't used their system. Um, in looking at them uh, side by side when I f was first looking at this stuff, um, I don't know. I think... Uh, I just chose what worked best for how what worked for me. Um, I think um, I can answer that. Um, I think one of the main, for me, one of the main differences with Got Photo and Photo Day, Photo Day has um, a lot of um, your sports design. So if you're doing the, the team posing and individual posing shots, and you want to put those together in a composite that's already made or memory made that's already made at the lab or whatever. Um, that's one thing Got Photo does not support. They do not do that. Uh, Got Photo is straight, single surface or or single image um, um, product. It's not uh, for um, designed memory mates and that sort of thing. So it's well, prints basically. So Prince and, and Jen. um, Jen's asking, so do you need a sample profile already in the system for each player in order to match with the capture app? You can do that day of. You don't need that beforehand. You actually do it day of picture. Um, you can also mark somebody as absent. So if you've got a team of 12 and you've got 11 in there and that one kid, you ask the coach, hey, coach, where's, you know, where's, where's Johnny Smith? Well, Johnny Smith's not here. You just mark him absent. Well, that will separate out that data so when you download that CSV file, you can see who wasn't there. Um, it helps you tell somebody, hey, you know, why don't I have photos? Well, you didn't show up to the shoot. You weren't there that day. Instead of, you know, you were shooting six, 800 kids. You don't know who was there and who wasn't. Uh, but Capture App will tell you uh, that person wasn't there that day. Um, so, yeah, you do it day of. Um, works really, really well. Um, Reshow last photo. I was not able to get notes. Thanks, Caroline. She wants Please to show the last there. photo. Yeah, I think the last it with with my images up there. Yeah. Um, give me one second. Do we need to group Oops. by person? I'm not sure what that means, Janet. Um, do we need to group by person? <laughs> Well, Lisa's in the house. Lisa Malice of Photo Day is actually here in our uh, in our webinar. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> you can see the train wreck that's going on right now. <laughs> um, uh, Lisa is uh, Photo Day's marketing guru. She is also, I think, uh, uh, moving up in the world over there. But. Um, uh, one moment. Is this the screen that the person that wanted to see the last screen? I think she was looking for the one with my image on it. Oh, well, let's show that again. Absolutely. Here we go. 
So we were talking about this slide says up, upping your game. Um, image is really king on uh, gallery sales. You really want your images to look their very best. Yeah. And so um, with the amount of time you save, uh, not managing paper and all of the back end, you can spend more time honing your craft. Um, you know, I, I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, I've been compositing for about six years uh, before it really kind of became this you know, new COVID thing that uh, became very, very convenient. Uh, I've had the best winter season I've ever had. Uh, I picked up six swim teams just in uh, December to January alone. And um, that's simply because they were trying to find a COVID uh, a COVID compliant or a more COVID friendly way of doing team photos. They didn't want to put all their students together because if it, it, all it took was one kid getting it or testing positive or being in with somebody uh, that had tested positive and they quarantine the team and then they can't compete. And so they really didn't want to take a chance on not being able to compete at uh, uh, all of the big meets at the end of the year. So um, they were using me to do composites and that was probably the best thing. Um, you know, was, was that you're able to kind of spend that extra time, uh, doing a little bit more, uh, honing of your craft. So. Sorry, I was, um, answering uh, a question. I went back to the, can we see what the client sees in photo day? Actually, um, with any job, you get the access code. So you would be able to go in and look at any job the way that a customer would see it by using that access code and going in the way the customer goes in. That's the way we do it. So there are three three types of galleries. There is the public gallery, which is requires no password, no code, nothing. You just, you know, you, you uh, it's open and it's one code and everybody gets to see the photos. Um, then there's the, pro, uh, the, uh, the, the group gallery, which is used really kind of for um, sports, for um, team photos and things that you don't have to worry about necessarily um, worrying about tons of people seeing it, but you really want to limit it to just the team. Um, that is a code that can go out to just the team. So I use it a lot for high schools. Um, I don't have to use a private gallery for uh, for a high school team. Say I'm just doing one team, there's 12 kids. There's no reason to ne necessarily do a, um, uh, a private gallery. However, private galleries make it so that, um, you know, you can really granularly market to each person um, they don't have to see. It makes it easier for them to, to not have to see everybody else's images. All the images are already there that they're going to get to see. So um, any any image that their kid is in, including the group photo. So um, I did a we did that big that big team photo, and it found every single face in that team photo. And I had to just go into the system and say apply to all. And it was just a quick button push. It really didn't take any extra effort on me. But because it kept finding every single one it needed to be applied to all the team so that they could each have that in their gallery. Um, you know, just simple things like that. Um, I photograph kids, school kids in classrooms at recess and other images full of information. I don't want to have to group my kids. Wondering if parents can find their kid then find all through face find. Actually, if you use a group, um, you can use find all find by tags so you can tag uh, specific groups um, or you can have them use face find um, you can turn any one of those features on and off as well so um, in the group gallery uh, so if you just want them to use face find which would be fantastic just turn off find by all and find by tags you don't have to have those on and then that will force them to take a picture of their own kid in the gallery when they're you know you say find you face find and right there in the app on their phone they just point their phone at their kid and go hey kid come here done and all of the images that have their kid on it uh will show up um now there are some caveats there of course you know if there's more kid faces in the background you'll get all those as well so um it tends to it, it that part tends to be a little less curated than specifically down to uh you know if you got kids at recess and you're taking kids, you know, lots of them, um, that photo is going to be in multiple people's galleries or multiple, you know, face find searches. Um, of course, you know, there's more more information on how face find works, and we're going to go over that de in much more detail um, in another uh, in another podcast. Uh, hey, Brian, um, John Pratt has his hand up, so let's um, take his question. All right. Hi, John. Hi. 
You've actually oh, already answered. You actually already answered it. I, I did that in chat. You guys answered it. The oh, cool. Q and A already. So oh, we're cool. good. Yeah. Cool. Let's see. How well does this work with schools and teams who don't want to give you individual families emails? Some schools I work with prefer to email gallery links to the parents themselves. Does this impact the upsell? Um, as long as they're getting the code, um, that's fine. But if you're going to use a private gallery, you really want those emails yourself. And that can be managed um, with a, a sign-up sheet. You can give them a link and they can just sign up themselves. That way the school doesn't feel like they're you know, giving out parent information. Um, something about schools and their, you know, their death grip on uh, parent email information. It's like they're the secret keepers of all of the data. Um, when they realize you're going to get it anyway, and they're just you're just making their job, you, they are just making your job more difficult. If they've hired you to do their school photos, you should be considered a trusted uh, a trusted service provider, and they should be able to provide that information to you to make your job easier. Um, that's how I, that's how I put it to those. And, and if you're getting that kind of resistance, you might want to find somebody a little higher up than who you're dealing with to get that information to you because somebody's told them that they can't send that out. You need someone to tell them that that's, that's okay. Um, so go to the next level up. You know, if you're talking to the secretary, move up to the vice principal or principal or even athletic director, and they'll be able to provide that to you because you're going to tell them, Hey, if you can't get it to me, I have to have it anyway. Um, I need you to send this link out to all the parents for a sign-up sheet. Uh, matter of fact, that Nixa team did not have emails for their parents, which I'm not sure how he's communicating with them all um, at, at any given time, but he did not have emails for the parents. He had emails for the kids, which is weird, but I think it's because they use Google, you know, it's their student ID group, you know, Google uh, uh, Chrome, uh, not Chrome, yeah, Chrome or whatever it is on their, on their Chromebooks. Um, so I had to have a sign-up sheet, and he just said, well, I can do the sign-up sheet, and I'll just give you access. And so it was a Google sheet, and he just went ahead and gave me access, and I think there were four parents that didn't have uh, any contact info, and I just said, hey, can you tell those parents to go ahead? And about a week later, I got their info. Um, so that was a way around it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of studios do that. It's just another solution and workaround for the, uh, the secretary that thinks they're, uh, they're being the secret keepers. So... Uh, Anyway, let's see. And it does not, it will impact your, it will impact uh, your sales. If they don't know about it and they don't know when the photos are ready, yeah, it's absolutely going to uh, set you back in terms of, you know, who knows and how to access. Um, all that information needs to go out to the parents multiple times, as we talked before in the marketing part. Um, you need to touch them at least seven times. So, anyway. Did we answer Janet's question about how do parents use Face Find to find their kid? Um, did you see that question? How do they use Face Find? It says, how do parents use Face Find to find their kid? I photograph school kids in classes at recess doing projects, often in groups with plenty of visual confusion in the background or foreground. It will find whatever faces are in it, but it will look for the one that they upload. So if they... Uh, they need to just be in their gallery, and then when um, when it comes time for, you know, they, they log in and they're in their gallery, the only way to search for an image that will come across the, the, the website or the photo, or, or sorry, or the app, Photo Day has their own app, by the way. I, I don't know if I ever actually said that. Photo Day has their own app, um, which the app also, God, I'm digressing, like, hugely here, Terry. Uh, <laughs> the app has... Uh, 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 Remember, we have three more episodes. I'm not trying to cram it all in at once. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, the, it's got screenshot protection on the app. You can't screenshot protect a, uh, you know, the, the, a web, uh, web page, but you can screenshot protect the app. Anyway, but the app is really, is really sweet. Um, it will bring it up and say, okay, let's find your kid. And you have to take a picture of your, of your child. And you, you know, it's got a little guide, a little dotted oval, and you fill the oval. Uh, with their face and then you take a shot and it will go through the gallery and find every photo that that face is in so it's and they also place. they can also um choose a photo already on their phone right yes they can actually they choose can. a photo that's already on their phone um it's usually just faster to you know uh, have the kid right there and just take his picture but uh her his whomever um but yeah that's they can upload a photo that's already there if they've got a decent one so um, any other questions we've got that are pressing here? 
Can you um, keep galleries live indefinitely? Absolutely. We you can you can expire them if you want. Um, right there at the beginning of the setup in your in your photo day panel, uh, right at the bottom, it says you know when do you want to ex you know set an expiration date. I do not expire my galleries. I used to my first couple just to think, and I was thinking, hey, this will drive you know people to buy. Hey, it's closing. Well, if they don't know it's there, how do they know it's closing? So in, at one point or another, they're going to come back and go. I never got the information. I didn't read. I didn't, you know, whatever. And so six months later, you're going to have to open the gallery again. Leave it open. I just got an order from last March for photos I did this March, um, or for a group I photographed again this March, because they said, you know what, with all of the pandemic, we really just weren't paying attention, and we still want those photos. Because I, sh I shot this baseball team right before the, they closed down everything, and all this, you know, basically they bought all these uniforms, they bought all this gear, and they didn't really have a season, but they wanted at least photos of it. So um, I was able to do that. Just say yes, the gallery is still live. Just go here's the link, and I just went ahead and emailed them a link. I went into my gallery, uh, in, into my uh, dashboard, and just sent them a, a quick marketing flyer with their gallery for their kids' images, and uh, they, I think they spent like eighty or ninety bucks on photos. So. That's uh, that's huge. Don't don't expire your galleries. I'm, we're finding that that's really the best best practice method for uh, continuing sales. So we see it all the time. Uh, use instead of shoot proof or in conjunction. Um, this kills shoot proof. In my opinion, that shoot proof is not a volume uh, solution for you. Um, yes, it can be tied to labs, but I I pretty much think you know this is really designed for this business yeah and there again i don't think shoot proof um supports the um personalization of product like no, no names and no that sort of stuff on your product uh, so. upload a photo and that's all you got but it, it doesn't you know i don't know if they've got marketing or any of that other stuff they certainly don't have built-in text message marketing um you know they don't have the support staff that uh, the photo day does um, if you have a question about photo day and you're stuck Use the bubble in the bottom of the uh, bottom right of your dashboard. Um, the girls net uh, support service, Stephanie, uh, and the rest. There's like three more. Um, they are fantastic. They can help you in seconds. Um, I think the longest I've ever had to wait was like 25 minutes for an answer, and that was simply because they were all in a meeting. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's. Really I think cool. one of I think one of the things that I liked best about um, Photo Day for our photographers was the um, the pay schedule, the fees to the photographer. I think that they're um, some of the lowest out there. Um, so if you want to get into uh, online photo sales, um, Photo Day makes sense uh, in so many ways in that respect. Uh, if you want to get your feet wet and and um, you're not sure what kind of investment you want. And once you start, you're going to be hooked. So it's yeah, absolutely. Um, I got another question at the bottom here. It says, can you manually organize your photos into an individual albums? Um, I just shot a dance performance and many of the images are too small for face recognition. Can I put them into albums? You can't, there isn't really certain albums, but you can, you can um, organize them using tags. So you can tag say a specific dance. So if there was a specific costume name um, or whatever, however you want to segment those out, you can just highlight them and hit tag, and they can search for those photos by tag. I think that's a fantastic way of organizing uh, something like that. Uh, like an it event. is, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't see any others in here. Anybody else any, got any more questions? Or any more questions for us today? Where we're, where we're heading with this, so our second episode. I just have a quick uh, comment here. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> there's, I, I just saw a few questions about what you can use this for. And really, the sky's the limit as far as events go. We have people doing candid shots from wedding receptions. We have action uh, photography on here. And that's kind of where the face find really comes into its own. Um, you know, that ability to go out, shoot shots candidly, and then you know, people can come along and find anything that might have their kid in it. Um, it's just, you don't, don't think you're limited. Yeah. yeah, don't think you're limited to just sport or just classroom photos. There really is no limit to the kind of events you can put on here. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it's fantastic for group stuff as well as for yeah. events. Um, yeah, I, I've seen people use it for seniors. I've seen people use it for weddings. I've seen people use it for, you know, race uh, races. Mm -hmm. uh, so like action shots is a really is action. another way. It's a action way shots. to market those action shots that you you didn't you love taking, but you don't know how to get them to the folks, you know, exactly. so that they can have them. Exactly. And obviously, right now, graduation get a lot of graduation shots in right now let's see there's a question about following up on the tagging can you tag a bunch at once or do you have to do one at a time um you can tag here's a great this is a great process that that uh, i i was absolutely thrilled with when they uh, when they released this feature you can use your folder structure on your computer to create your tags so you can have a completed image folder that um, houses other subfolders. So, say you have uh, a dance school and you're you're photographing their their dance recital. You can organize the folders by whatever uh, whatever dance name, whatever the the costume name, and use those folders, and then just upload the one folder, and it will tag every image inside a subfolder with that folder's name. You don't have to do anything extra. Um, if you think about it in terms of folder structure, um, that will take all of the t all of the pain out of out of tagging. It's also very easy to go ahead and tag them as well, as long as you're uploading them in groups. So if you you know you've done them, um, you've done everything in consecutive order. It's really easy to just highlight one, go to the bottom, shift you know shift and click on the last one of that dance, and then just hit apply tag, and and type in your tag, and that's uh, that's pretty easy to do as well. Um, so yeah, the tagging is really, uh, really powerful, um, but it's also very, very simple. So, albums themselves. Can people make albums themselves directly through the PD app or site? Albums. Um, are we talking about Janet? Are you talking about photo albums to sell, or are you talking about um, a, a gallery type? Grouping. I think grouping their images together. Yeah. So she's asking if if customers can group the. I think that's what she's you asking. Can't, customers can't group them together. You have to provide that organization or that ability to uh, to search them. Oh, she what says no. Yes, yeah, albums to sell. Can they make albums? I'm not aware of uh, any lab that's offering albums through uh, through <laughs> Photo Day. It's just because there's so much more that goes into the album. I think it's just a really complex process. I mean. You know, yeah. it, it comes down to you've got, you know, cover choices, paper choices, layout. Um, that's a whole nother, you know, software all by itself um, that that's not, you know, inside uh, inside photo day. Um, that would be something you'd want to work with that lab with. Um, if you're happy with your lab, just call them and, you know, get their get their software. Um, I know Black River's got their own album, uh, album creation software. I know others do their, their own thing. And then there's other stuff out there that we'll, we'll use uh, to create albums. Um, you could create the albums as a, and then export each page as a PDF and they could order that as a page. Anything that you can create as an image that can be printed on any image size, you can order off, uh, you know, off uh, photo day through it, through a lab. But as far as providing an album, no, I, that's not something they do. Will it use tags made within Bridge, Photoshop, etc.? Okay, so there's another part of that tagging process. You can use uh, metadata in uh, as your tag. So um, any kind of uh, hierarchical keywords, um, you can use keywording as your tags. Uh, but beware, <laughs> anything you type in there shows up as a keyword. Uh, you know, so don't type something derogatory in there <laughs> and have it upload. Um, it, it will. Oh, nobody does that. No, Come on, nobody no, no, does. No. That. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, be very specific on how you import that. I have some stuff that automatically tags uh, and puts my name and my my stuff in there as a tag, or as a um, uh, in metadata. And you don't want that on every single image as a tag. It just it's it's redundant, but it's automatic for me because of how I have my my in, intake set up in Lightroom from importing my images. So it automatically adds, adds that. So that's in there as a keyword. Uh, the year is automatically imported as a keyword for me, which is fine. But, you know, now you've got a keyword that says 2021 
and that's every single photo in the gallery. So you don't need a tag that has every single gallery image. It's already there as uh, view all. So. <sighs> Uh, yet no one will search on that, so does it matter? I mean, your name. No, but it creates a tag that they have to look at. So if you're searching by tag, the tags are listed. They can see the tag. And so it, it just creates more confusion. You want to simplify it for your clients. You don't want them to have to look through 25 different tags that have nothing to do with what they're looking for. Um, anyway, so. And Brian, your, your system is so high tech. That's why we've got episode four, which is, just open Q and A for Brian, how he does things, what he uses, all that stuff. I've been on a shoot with him. It's kind of amazing. I couldn't believe, I mean, of course I could because he's a very talented individual, but I, I couldn't believe that out of all that chaos, this is what we were, what we were delivered with. So it was awesome. Well, I think we've got three minutes, so let's see. Can we, it says, do you have any, do you have difficulties with people screenshotting their images rather than purchasing? No, um, not for me. I know that some have uh, have seen their stuff out there. You're never going to stop the screenshot. I don't care what's, what technology, I don't care what, uh, what kind of watermark you use? You can say this image has been stolen from Brian Durinsky Photography right across the thing in big. And red they red will red. post it to Facebook. You're post it to Facebook. You're not going to change anyone's <laughs> mind. Uh, so don't worry about them. It's not. A don't worry about it. You know what? They weren't going to buy from you anyway, were they? Uh, if that's the quality that they're they're accepting and that's what they want, then that's where they're going to go. Um, yeah, you give up on it. It's not worth the. It's not worth the headache and getting aggravated with it. Um, they will always screenshot it. They want that. They want that. Um, uh, the endorphin rush from that from that post. So whatever. Does the copyright Does the copyright across the face reduce the sales? Nah. I don't think so. Yeah. Not really. So I mean, I don't make it. Yeah. Mine's on there. It's just across the middle of the page, and it's red. And so you know, yeah. it's huge. It's good enough. And honestly, if you want to screenshot my stuff with my logo on it. Awesome. Knock yourself out. Do. Um, you know, <laughs> whatever. So, uh, but here's another thing. Getting back to that sales and marketing portion, create your packages that include a social media. Just include your social yep. media yep. in your packages, price them appropriately, and you don't have to worry about screenshotting. They're going to get one anyway. So what does it matter if they screenshot the individual? They weren't going to buy a package? Fine. You're not my client. That's cool. I'm happy with that. And be prepared because they're going to put a filter on that social media image. <laughs> they're going to do it. Just, yeah. yep. just yep. here's the image. Do with it what you want. Turn around and walk away. Right. And you got your sale. But I include a, 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 a social media ready digital image, which is a, a small, like 600 by 400 uh, pixel image. It's already sized for social media, ready to go. And uh, it's not printable. Trust me. I've tried. I took it to Walgreens to see if it could get printed. It looked like garbage. Sure, they'll print it, but it won't look good. Um, but, you know, it's just not printable. Um, so okay, I'm, I'm so she's asking, do you have copyright with your name on the social media files when purchased? No. So do you put your copyright on there? No, my uh, my logo's not on there. There's no copyright. Um, you know, you buy a social media digital, it's just your digital image to use. Um, you can't print it, so it's fine. <laughs> Um, but the Brian is unconcerned. I'm, just, I'm not worried about it. I gave up worrying about that about a couple of years ago. I got bent out of shape and realized it, it doesn't matter. Um, you know what you're getting because you know I've seen your work. It's beautiful. I think what you get with beautiful work far far outweighs. It's kind of like um, what do they say? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Anyone anyone who's like going to steal from you or or th it's flattery. I mean, really, and it's very, very small in respect to what you've sold. And, and you know, I think the good that it does your business rather than the bad that it does your business. Yeah, really. like I said, I've got a logo on it. It's fine. If they did it, then I'm getting some free marketing out of it. That's, you know, they're, they're sending it out to everybody. They're like, hey, where did you yes. get those photos? Yes. There's my name right there. So yes. I'm, I'm good with That's it. Right. Um. I'm not concerned, but was curious if Guru Brian included or not. <laughs> guru Brian doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> Brian Guru doesn't care. I don't know what the, where the Guru came from, but I'm good. So. We'll have the incense burning for you. and 
sitar music. And and that... <laughs> Break out the hookah. <laughs> anyway, so... so I think what we're going to move on second episode to what? That's right. Packages and driving sales. That's right. Um, I already just yep. gave you a tip right there about including your social media digital in your package to eliminate the uh, the need to screenshot. You've just given. I know there were a couple of spoilers in this webinar, so. But we'll go in more into depth in in, uh, in tips and techniques. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.